All right, so the last idea here is that all of this works. Uh, it's saving a name. It's uh, displaying it at the moment that I first save the name. I wanted to say the name every time I launch the app. I want it to welcome me every time I launch the app. I customized it. It's not doing that now, if you notice, because every time we launch, it forgets. So we're going to retrieve the data that is, stole, that is stored in the local storage upon every time that the app launches. So all of this is happening inside of got name OK. What we'll do now is, is um, <coughs> oh, and it's all further happening inside of get name. All of the get, get name is about uh, retrieving the name for the first time. After that, it's a matter of showing the name. We have a function, we have an algorithm set up to get the name for the first time. We need an algorithm, we need a function, a way to retrieve the name subsequent times. So make sure you're outside and, and it's very easy to lose track of all these curly braces. That's why you want to have you know, comments. This one I can tell that that closes my else. That's all part of this first if part, if you want to make a comment on that. But anyway, after the end of get name, the next parentheses that comes is uh, received event. It might be a good idea to make a note of that one because we're going to forget about what these things are. End of received events. End of the app, basically. So if you got those there, you should, you should be in good shape. If any of them are missing, you have to figure that out. We'll do the, the help a little later. But after the, after the get name, I want to define a whole new function. I'm going to give myself some space there, one space above and below, just for some breathing room. But after end of get name, but before end of received event, because everything we do here is before the end of received event, we'll do function show name. This one's not going to be as complex as the previous one. The other one did the, all the hard work. This one's just going to be about retrieving. The idea here is as soon as the app loads, <coughs> run this. What this will do is it will check, was there a name saved? If yes, show it. If there was no name saved, don't show anything, don't do anything. Was the name saved valid? Yes, then show it. If it was invalid, then don't show it. That all is basically doing this part again, uh, doing this if part again. Let's save ourselves a little bit of typing and copy the if, just that first if part. That's what I need to check for again. I don't need that switch, and I don't need that else if, I just need if. I don't want to type that again and mis mistype it. So copy that whole if to the end of that curly brace on that one line, and paste it inside of show name. That's what we're checking. Let's show the name, but let's check if we have valid data first. So I pasted that whole if Again, this is checking. This is used to set and to get. Local storage can set the username and it can get the username. So we're checking that. That ends in a curly brace, or an open curly brace. Make sure we close the curly brace on the next line. And all of this first part is to check, is there valid data? All of this checks no, there's no valid data, so nothing's really going to happen. I'll just put some console output. Console, oops. Console. 
I'll say no name was saved yet. The very, very, very first time the app launches, this condition will be true. There has never been data saved. Subsequent times, then, we have an else. We have else after that. I just want to check two things. If it's this, or else it's that. If it's invalid, then nothing happens. Nothing happens to the user, but to me, the developer, I get some console output. And what should happen, actually, is to display the name on screen. I thought I already did that somehow. Yeah, right there. That else. That displays a name at the moment it's saved the first time. Let's copy that and put it into this else because then this is now setting up show the name every subsequent time. We use that exact same code. Find where those spans are at, replace them with this HTML, the name, which we know is valid because we're in the else part. This get name was triggered by a button click. I wanted to try to get the name. I wanted to show the name as soon as possible without any trigger. Just get it. So after defining our function, we call our function, show name, without any special trigger. The code will, will load in the app. It'll scan it from top to bottom, and it'll execute lines. It won't do get name until we click the button, but it will do show name right there because without any special trigger, it just invokes that function. Launch the app, try to show the name. There's either no name, so nothing happens, or there is a name. Show it. And that, uh, that's it. That function's way easier because it's based on that everything else already worked. Let me launch that, and then we'll see. We're just reusing code we used, we used before, but wrapping it in a different kind of function, which we are then calling immediately. We exactly we're calling it, we're defining it, and then we're calling it right away. Let's use it right away. <coughs> so if I launch welcome John Campos I got it. I didn't type it, I typed it five minutes ago. It was stored in the browser. We retrieved it. If I add another name, if I add another name, I'll save that. It took the name. Welcome. I close it completely. I run a new instance of it. So this new name has taken over the, the local storage object. It, it's holding one piece of data at a time. I can create multiple local storage objects, however, as many as I want. Local storage dot first name, local storage dot last name, local storage dot birthday, local storage dot age. I can save all of that data separate from itself and then retrieve it. And there, without me doing anything, I launched the app for the first time and it remembered the last name the last time I saved the name. If you want to fully test it with no name, you go to the console, you go to the application, and you go to your username, local storage item, and delete it. 
So we can delete the data that was stored in here. Launch it all again, and then there's no local storage anymore. This is how I can trigger the first part of the of this if else. I know that I deleted it, so in this case it's most likely null or undefined or something. So it'll be console log, no name was saved yet. Nothing will appear on screen, it'll just say welcome. But after the person adds their name, every time after that, welcome John. Yes? It's dependent on the browser itself. So if I use Chrome, it's saved in Chrome. If I then open up Firefox, it won't, it won't have that name. It's separated by browsers. Thinking about it in terms of a, an, of a device, of an app. This is going to the app. We're just testing it on the browser. But it's saved to the device. So then my name is going to be stored permanently onto my app right here. Every time I launch my app, it's, it's there. If I uninstall the app and reinstall it, then it's gone. But every time, you know, as long as I have the app still installed, the name got saved. How about when you update it? When you update the, the app, if I release version 2, that's a good question. Not exactly sure. Because, it, like, uh, you know, the apps like uh, banks, mm -hmm. they still retrieve it like your username. Most likely, what the way that those are working are by saving a lot of that important information to their server. Oh, they do a backup. They, they do some kind of backup to their server. So even if you uninstall your app or update the app, there's a point in the whole code that then it goes check the server. It goes to check the server, gets the latest data, and brings it back without you noticing it. Hmm. So that would be something to, to get to eventually. And right now we're just dealing with the one, one device. But here it is. I deleted the local storage object. I open up my console and it it's going to say in the console here, no name was saved yet. That's how I can trigger that part of it. I've never saved a name. And I can confirm by looking at application, local storage. In my current app, there is no local storage object saved. And I go through the process of saving another name again. The application tab shows I've saved the new username with a value. This was all part of get name, so I put it for the first time. And if I relaunch the app, it'll do show name. And uh, the name automatically shows, shows up again. Same thing like when you have a game in the app, like it saves your scores. Mm -hmm. It's basically the same code, but they trigger the score instead of the name. Yeah, this concept that we did here, we did it in a very simple way, but that is a very powerful thing for everything that we're talking about here. The data is stored somewhere, and then it's retrieved as soon as possible. In our case, just inside of our app, but if we fully go to the next levels eventually of our real database, that can be saved to a database on a server, and we'll pull the data back when the app launches. So if I upgrade from this, you know, G3 device and I get the G4, I install the app again in my username, lets me retrieve it from the server, and my data follows me. So um, this was the big goal for today. I wanted to touch on uh, saving basic data with a local storage object. As I said, local storage dot height, local storage dot weight, all of that is a brand new piece of data that gets saved permanently to the device until you un uninstall the app. And then we retrieve it, we show it on screen, we'll get more complex with, a, with real data when we start part three in that portion of the class, we're going to save lots of pieces of data and bundle it together. I want the person to save a, a class listing, a, a class schedule, which will include an instructor's name, the name of the class, the code of the class, notes, whatever. All those pieces of data, I want to bundle them together, save them, retrieve them, manipulate them, etc. 
Uh, that's going to be next month, but you can start looking at it over spring break, pouchdb.com. PouchDB is a database that syncs. It's a JavaScript-powered database. It doesn't need a server. Most databases need a server. MySQL runs on a server. SQL runs on a server. Uh, Oracle runs on a server. FoxPro, all of those things run on a server. There's a new generation of databases, which we'll go into detail, which is called the, no, the NoSQL paradigm. It's not running on a traditional server. It's running on the device. And it's saving data internally, very similar to local, local storage, but more complex. And we will be able to do this. We will be able to save data, a bundle of data, a unique ID, the person's name, their age, and all of that is put into the database replicated to a server, retrieved, etc. That'll be the big idea for next month. That takes us a couple of weeks to set up. And it'll take us two whole weeks to set up that database, which means it's a small database. When it gets much more complex, it easily takes months to set up a real database with lots of um, tables and such. That's next month. So. Um, we'll end the main lecture at this point. I'll put my code in the folder. We'll do some help. Uh, general question? Kind of a quick example that how we can run. So on the yeah. Yes, definitely. You can do this, one that I wrote myself. You can go to vmcinc.net, go to the blog, or one of these tutorials, I think, maybe tutorial. Go to the blog, and then there is a there is an article that I wrote on using PouchDB as a beginner to start to save data, and I'm going to use that part of that idea in the class. So it might help to look at it in more than one way when we actually by the time we do it. There's an article here called. Temporary website. Yeah. Well, that's a little bit different. Getting a website and getting a <coughs> server, I'm saying is differently. When you get one of these free websites, it's often a place where you can simply upload HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, so with, with our project, it's going to be an app eventually. So you can kind of test it as a website and then uh, eventually integrate it into our app. So that's a way to work. So if you browse my site here and you go find the July 30th article, PouchDB Intro, based on this article, we're going to create a database that saves information and retrieves <coughs> it and all of that. To me, the logo of PouchDB looks like a green pig, but it's supposed to be a little pouch holding coins. And so the code is there, the explanation, it all works. It's, it's long because this stuff gets complicated. But a data-driven app is the, is the one we often want to work with, not a static app that just shows you information. We want the user to be able to create information, retrieve information, it's data-driven. That's what most modern apps do. If I use Instagram, if I'm on Instagram all day long, you know, the shell of what I'm looking at is pretty easy. But what's happening? I upload a picture. Where do I upload it? To the Instagram server. I add a comment. I say, that gets saved to the Instagram server. I do all of that stuff and it's happening on a server. Data. So that's it for the moment. Uh, We'll wrap up and do a little lab time.